So I drive a Volkswagen Jetta, and there's nothing wrong with it. However, I really like Volkswagen, Audi, Porsche products. Um, they're all under the Volkswagen group, as well as Lamborghini. And a lot of times when I see a A6 go by, or a S5, or an A5, or even an A8, I often wonder, how much better is that car than mine? Is the grass that much greener? on that side of luxury. So I decided to go to a dealership and take a look at some Audis, and here's what I came across. Also, for good measure, I looked at several other luxury vehicles to see what I would be getting into. The answer is uncomfortable. Whether you're an Audi like this, a BMW, a Lexus, a Genesis, an Acura, an Infiniti, actually not an Infiniti and not the Acura either. These seats are actually pretty comfortable and not so much a Mercedes. These are a little bit more comfortable. So I guess the point here is that you want to be, again, sure that you want a vehicle like this. This car has very well appointed interior and the seats are actually more comfortable than uh, the Audi or the Genesis or the BMW. But still, it is a little tight in here and this car probably has less room than my Volkswagen Jetta. So. So you want to make sure you're buying the car for yourself. You see the commercial, the coworkers talking it up, but really you don't realize just how low the car sits. These cars sit very low, and if you're in a place where I live that has bad roads, the ride's going to be uncomfortable no matter how the suspension is because the car's going to be tossed a lot. It'll do a good job of absorbing the bumps, but may not be so good. Um, you look around this car. I mean, it's nice but it's cramped. Okay guys and gals, what I'm trying to convey in this video of weird cuts and a lot of rambling is that expectations and reality often differ very greatly. And that goes for a lot of things. So in this video, I'm not trying to dump on luxury cars. I'm just conveying the fact that I found out the Audi A6 is really not for me. And to take it a step further, I found out the modern luxury sedan, at least the modern midsize luxury sedan, is not for me either. I mean, a couple years worth of desire was disrupted and diminished in 15 minutes and me sitting in eight or so vehicles without even doing a test drive. You see, I've never owned a modern luxury car like the ones that I'm showing you in this video. I've always ridden in them, and I've had friends that have them, and I've driven them, but it's always cool to ride in the driver's, or in the passenger seat, or the back seat of a car while you're being driven around somewhere. Not having to drive immensely enhances the, the ride experience for me. And then driving a different car on occasion there's a thrill about that. It's something different. It's something new. It's something strange. So I really hadn't taken into account how these vehicles would feel just having them day to day and commuting to work in them. And I know what you're thinking. I haven't even driven the vehicles and I'm already writing them off saying they're not for me. They're not comfortable. How can I say that? And for me, it's just something I know by feel. So about 10 years or so ago, I was looking for a different vehicle or another vehicle, and I looked at an early 2000s Honda Prelude. It was in great condition, no mechanical issues, and I had seen the car. I always loved the design. I loved the back of the car. I loved the front of the car. I loved the silhouette, and I found this guy, and he was selling it, and so I get in the vehicle, and he gets in the passenger seat. Um, and I'm going to do like a test drive and I immediately sit down in the vehicle and I feel like I'm sitting on the ground and I'm like, oh no, I'm not going to like this. But because the guy had agreed to meet me somewhere, I was like, well, I'll at least drive it around a little bit. Maybe this feeling will pass. And it didn't. And ever since then, I've known from 
the jump when I sit in a vehicle, whether or not I'm going to like it. And this comes from experience driving many different types of vehicles. I've had a driver's license for like two decades now. And so it's it's not a mystery to me when I sit in a vehicle how the suspension is going to feel, you know, based on the ride height and, and the way you sit in a vehicle. I don't like to be feel like I'm sitting on the ground or sitting in a bunker. And I felt that way in a lot of these vehicles. And again, modern luxury cars are designed to, con- to kind of cocoon you and give you a firm, sporty ride. And I'm more of a person who likes a traditional, comfortable ride and ease of operation when I'm driving a luxury car. That's just it for me. And that's what luxury cars were when I was growing up. There wasn't this aim to get every vehicle on a track and whip your head back so hard into the you know, head restraint that you get a concussion. That's not what luxury is to me. And I guess another thing that I'll point out, two things, and, and I'll wrap this video up. And again, guys, this is just my experience. I'm just rambling off the cuff, giving you a, a look into my mindset going in, into how sometimes we don't really know what we want when we think we do. Um, so with my jet, it does have a sunroof. And I noticed in some of these cars, like some of the Infinities, the Audis, the sunroof was the same size as my Jetta, which really wasn't cool because that's a compact car. They're mid-sized cars. And then I, I really didn't feel like they were that much greater than like a newer Volkswagen SEL. As far as interior accommodations goes, I really didn't feel like there was that much to be desired over and above the Passat. And a lot of times, you know, luxury cars are kind of like smartphones where we get them and they have 300 different features and we only use 75 of them. And so a lot of it is presence and um, just perception, just, you know, being honest. But that kind of threw me off, um, you know, when comparing some of these cars to the Volkswagens that I love. And help me acknowledge my Jetta is not a bad car. And just because you want something new or something different doesn't mean your current situation is trash. You may be bored or tired of it, but you gotta kinda adjust your expectations. That grass is always greener on the other side kind of thing is really something that you you have to check in your mind. And so I'll go ahead and leave it at that. I've rambled on long enough. And uh, I'll make a bonus point before I go. Modern SUVs, at least midsize SUVs, are the same way. I hopped into an Acura at this dealership. Um, I don't know if it was an MDX or an RDX. And then I also hopped into a Lexus RX. And they felt the same way. For their size and footprint, the cabins felt small and kind of cramped. And I'm not that big of a guy, so when I sit in a seat and it's tight... That doesn't make sense to me unless it's a smaller vehicle and these were not. So I guess that's just the way of things and it's back to the drawing board for me. And I guess I have more time to save up for a down payment or paying a car in cash. So I'll see you guys in the next one. So this follows along the lines of the Audi and the BMW. And the thing is the bodies are still the same length. <sighs> Not impressed with modern luxury, I've got to say.